following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Boatest.com. Today, I'm on an all-new boat from Chaparral, the 297 SSX. I'm going to do a full features walkthrough and sea trial, but first, the design team at Chaparral told me that they made this to be an open concept day cruiser for people with a lot of friends and family. So let's take a look and see how they've done. The cockpit, of course, is where we're going to be getting our first introduction to the usability of the 297 SSX, and the seating wraps around nearly all the way, including the two forward seats that can swing around to join the crowd. Naturally, the pedestal table adds functionality, and notice we've got two stainless steel drink holders integrated into the table, and it's the stern seating where we have the lion's share of the functionality. At the touch of a button, it lays down into a sun pad 6 feet 4 inches by 3 feet 8 inches, and it also easily converts to a chaise lounge in two separate positions. And this can be forward facing too. Of course, we've got a distinct comfort level in the cockpit area. Wraparound bolsters add to that. The seats, multiple densities of foam, plus we have differing materials along with double French stitching, stainless steel drink holders grab handle and aft facing speakers are tucked into the bulwarks. To the starboard side, there's a 35 quart carry-on cooler. Under the port side seating, plenty of storage. It includes a water toy inflator. I also like to see that the seats are hinged. Now the comfort level continues as we move forward to these seats, not so much double wide, but seat and a half width at 26 inches. It includes a single flip up bolster Extra padding on the back with differing materials and diamond stitching, custom embroidery, and notice the adjustments are on the side, easy to spot rather than having to hunt around underneath the seats. On the left hand side we've got a comfortable armrest with a stainless steel grab handle, stainless steel drink holder, and just ahead is a glove box that is separated this time from the door where we usually see it. Now we've got a beautifully molded door with a small space up on top for putting stuff, but look at the fabric going around the sides integrated with this nice trim piece. Inside we've got a double latch leading to a beautiful head with an electric toilet. A pump out head is optional. We've got Corian counter with a stainless steel sink with a pull out sprayer and an opening port light for ventilation. And notice that we have shelving in the back for storage. And in true chaparral fashion, there is storage within storage. Overhead, look at this tower. Not only does it provide us an elevated tow point six feet and nine inches off the deck, but it's got an integrated bimini top. And the whole tower is collapsible. At the swim platform, in addition to the adjustable seat, we have a single seat over to the port hand side. Combined, they're 65 inches across. Now the swim platform comes out 32 inches from the transom. We've got a grab rail on the back with an integrated tow point, so this is the second one in addition to the elevated tow point we have on top of the tower. Over to the starboard side, tension hinges on the hatch conceal a four-step reboarding ladder with an integrated grab handle. I like the stainless steel accent piece that has the integrated cleat that keeps it up high out of the trip zone. However, we do have another cleat on the deck level, and this is a pull-up cleat, so it still eliminates the tripping hazard. Just ahead, the Polk Audio Stereo Remote also has an integrated trim switch. Now, the 287 received a makeover, giving it completely new DNA separate from the rest of the Chaparral lineup, and a lot of that went into the panel right here at the helm. It starts with the soft touch dash on top of the panel, which has two 7 inch screens. Now, these are integrated with the engine, so they can both give you gauges, moving map, and sonar and we can swap back and forth from one to the other. And also notice how they're slightly beveled to give us a better field of view. To the sides, chrome mounts for push button switches that are all lighted when activated, small cubby for your cell phone right next to an accessory port, and then the ignition. Over on the right hand side, Lemco trim tabs. And over the side, we've got our Polk audio system just underneath MP3 and USB connectivity right next to the drink holder where the phone is probably going to go. Then we've got a conveniently located Digital throttle and shift right alongside. The steering wheel is a custom wrapped model and notice the logo in the center is free floating so no matter which way the wheel is turned it always points up and the entire wheel is mounted to a tilt base. The helm seat like the passenger seat not so much double width but seat and a half width and again we've got the controls on both sides for rotating and sliding fore and aft. The windshield closes off and we have an air dam just below and with the air dam in this position we have access to a storage drawer and 
an opening hatch leading inside the console. With the windshield opened up and the air dam closed off, now we can access the roomy bow and just look at the spaciousness and the safety level here. It starts with the usual bow rider configuration of two lounge seats, but notice how the seats curve down as it meets the bottom. Plus, we have two flip-up armrests, one to port and one to starboard. The upscale features continue with multiple densities of fabric, diamond stitching, again the flip-up armrest. The safety factor comes into play where we have 20 inches above the seat to the top of the bolster. These bolsters wrap all the way around the bow and as we move forward, we've got a removable cushion leading to a step up to the foredeck. Underneath that step, we have an integrated cooler that is self-draining. A convenient grab rail is above the seats, storage is below. And naturally, we can transfer the side-mount pedestal table to the bow to increase the functionality of this area as well. Chaparral also did a nice job with placement of the courtesy lighting. At the foredeck, two six-inch pull-up cleats to either side of a hatch that lifts on tension hinges to hold it in position. Underneath is a Lumar windlass with access to the side to get to the road. The road leads out to an anchor roller. The anchor is mounted through the stem. We have a safety chain and there's a cleat to secure the road to. A wrench is alongside so we can manually operate the windlass and two control switches are just alongside, fully forward. The nav light rotates into position. And finally, the engine compartment is accessed from a switch at the helm controlling the electrically actuated hatch. Inside is the single 380 horsepower Mercruiser 8.2 with plenty of room to the sides for servicing. Engine start and house batteries are easily accessible and secured properly. The Chaparral 297 SSX has a length overall of 29 feet, a beam of 9 feet, and a draft of 38 inches. With an empty weight of 6,200 pounds, full fuel, and three people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 7,405 pounds. Now, admittedly, that's on the heavy side with three men aboard and full 100 gallons of fuel. The temperature was 86 degrees with winds blowing from 10 to 15 miles per hour, creating a light chop on the water. The top RPM we could get out of the 8.2 mag turning a Bravo 3 outdrive with 24 pitch prop sets was 4850 RPM. In those conditions and at that RPM, we recorded a wide open throttle speed of 48.1 miles per hour. However, when the Chaparral team subsequently tested the boat with two men aboard and half load of fuel on a 70 degree day with light winds, they recorded 50 miles per hour and we think that under those conditions, those numbers are accurate. We recorded a best cruise at 3,000 RPM and 25.5 miles per hour. At that speed, the 12 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 2.1 miles per gallon and a range of 191 statute miles, all while holding back a 10% reserve of fuel in the bank. As for her handling, with her extended V-plane hull that carries the running surface well past the transom, along with the flat running pad at the bottom, we reached planing speed in 4.1 seconds accelerated to 20 miles per hour in 6.9 and 30 in 10.1 seconds, all with minimal bow rise. While we had comp conditions during the camera portion of our program, crossing back and forth across the wakes showed a smooth transition and a dry ride. In turn tests, she clings to the water like she's on rails and we found her to be very responsive to the helm. Well, not only do we have a great handling boat, but an open layout that can accommodate a lot of people for having a great day in the water. That's my look at the 297 SSX from Chaparral. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.